This video is going to be a continuation of the planning and setup and the programming of this little piece here for the small integrex here at, at Centerline. And this I'm going to mostly um, focus on the actual simulation on the computer and how we're going to go about doing it. I'm not going to go into detail, a lot of detail on, on um, how to program these cycles in Esprit because this isn't a, isn't a tutorial on Esprit software. What I want to focus on mostly is, is the plan and, and going about how we're going to do this job really for the purpose of this video. So I'm going to just show the simulation on the computer here and, and kind of talk about that in this uh, video. In upcoming videos, if I can, we'll, we'll uh, film the actual setting up or some of the machining cycles and at that time we'll know more about what feeds and speeds actually work for this and we'll be able to discuss that in a little more detail then. There's really no point in talking about it now because we don't really know yet, you know. We, I just kind of guess at what I think might work but we don't know exactly what will work so in a future video I'll, I'll point out what I started with and what I ended up with maybe and, and we can discuss that in a future video. So let's look at the simulation and see uh, how I plan to go about doing the first end of this little part. Here's the simulation, roughing the OD, drilling through the part with a through hole, rough the ID, finish the OD in the back taper in that small diameter, and then we're going to rough these face pockets in here from this, from this end first. You can see the tool is kind of zigzagging down in Z, and then it makes its track around the pocket. I'm not real confident this tool is going to hold up for the whole three pockets. We're going to have to see on that one. I'm not giving detailed um, milling parameters or, or turning parameters yet because we haven't as yet done this and so I don't know what the final result's going to be on that. So when that happens then I'll give some more detailed information on what the you know what feeds and speeds we actually used on these tools to do this. So this is a five axis milling cycle here, although it's not moving the B axis. If you look at the left hand view of the machine coordinates, the B is fixed at 90 degrees, but it's still, well the surfacing in the middle is just straight surfacing, but the, the walls were five axis swarf milling cycles, but I fixed the B axis to 90 degrees on them. Because the sides of those webs actually aren't um, they're kind of tapered and they they're not parallel to each other and and it's kind of creating a problem that it would have been easier to mill certain features of this part from the face end of it at least with some some also swarf milling five axis milling cycles but I couldn't make it work I tried various strategies and and I just couldn't get it to work because as you'll see in a second here when I turn the part around, or actually turn the milling up to the end of the part in the simulation, the I'm going to break away to the CAD model, and you'll see the what I'm talking about. I show a kind of a close-up view of that inside radius of that face pocket, and how it intersects the conical surface and radius in the back of the part, and it, it they kind of overlap each other in so, in a, such a way that you can't really use a, a proper five axis strategy to mill around that it would be ideal because it would go a lot faster than this surfacing milling type of milling we're doing here you'll see here I'm going to show the model and you can see these um, first of all the match line where that radius intersects the conical surface is not straight that's an issue there but also you'll see that the surface is actually falling behind the wall of the other part of the pocket so you can't really get in there square with the end mill and it um, it 
creates havoc with the the swarf milling cycle. You can't define a, a decent. It needs a decent ruled surface to to do it, and you really can't define one. And I even tried to do the OD part of that with one, and then just do the the cone, but then it leaves some unmachined areas. So I went back to this surfacing cycle and ended up with it. And it's going to take longer to do this because you got this very small step step down to get a sort of decent finish on the conical shape but because of the way they've designed the part and if there's any engineering students watching this take note that try to avoid shapes like that because it just increases the cost of manufacturing them so anyway this is the finished cut on the OD here to, to establish the finished size of datum A right there and then we're going to bore the finished bore sizes in the bore here with this tool which is a separate boring bar from the roughing one and then there's a, a groove which I think is a snap ring groove on the ID here oftentimes I don't draw the the tools perfectly the way they really are because it's it just takes a lot of time and I just don't want to spend the time doing it you know to get a fancy simulation but and it really doesn't matter most of the time. Here's a here's an eighth inch end mill making spot faces for this angle hole to start. Then we come in with a short drill to drill a start hole for the gun drill, which is going to finish the holes to depth there. And then after that gun drill, we come and spot drill all for all of the holes in the face. The there's a there are 201 thousandths clearance holes for I think a 1032 socketed cap screw so that's what it's doing there and then after that there's these two smaller holes on the on the face there that are, are for um, I think eighth inch dowel pins are going to press in there to, for alignment to the other parts that bolt to this so that's what it's doing there and then we come back for the their OD um, there's a port on the OD here. I'm not exactly sure what that does, but it's kind of a tapered conical seal thing, it looks like. So there's a grooving tool and a chamfering tool, and then this is going to have to be a special form tool to create the port, and then a 3H24 thread milled with a thread mill. So that's the complete operation on that end of the part it took uh, 27 tools to do that and I um, hope they're getting good money for this part because this is going to take some time in this 17-4 uh, stainless the H1150 is the easiest heat treat to machine in the in 17-4 but according to the computer unless I can speed up these feed, feeds and speeds on a lot of this it's going to going to take about four hours to actually do all of that machining on the end of this part so like I say I hope they're getting some decent money for this part and there there's the finished model and we got to come back from the other side and finish that conical area and the webs and that undercut after we spot face for those um socketed cap screw that are going in those holes So it's going to be kind of an interesting part to do, but uh, maybe we can speed that cycle time up. The computer isn't always right about how long it takes sometimes. Cap screw that are going in those holes. So that's the simulation on the first end of this part. If there was anything that was a little bit unclear, please ask questions about it, and I'll try to answer them. I try to get to all the answers on questions if I can, but I don't know, the way YouTube puts your um, comments in there, sometimes, you know, the comments don't come, I wish they would put them all just right at the top of the comment list so I could see them, but sometimes you'll comment on a, a it's kind of a thread of comments, I guess you might say, that's going on maybe a hundred comments ago, and, and, they, and I don't always see those, and I try to go through them numerous times to answer your questions so please ask questions this is what I'm doing this for I want you to ask questions about things 
Don't be afraid of doing that, no matter how silly it might seem. So that's the simulation. That's what we're going to attempt to do. There might be a little break in time between when we actually do it because of the tooling issue I described earlier. Um, but we're going to get to it, and I'm going to hopefully be able to video some of the stuff happening at the machine. And I will let you know what I sort of tried to do in the CAM software and what actually worked if I can. You know, like uh, I tried to program a certain feed and speed here, but it didn't work out, or, the, or we had to add a tool because that, like I, I was saying in the, in the description about that quarter inch tool roughing the face pockets, I, I'm kind of thinking we're going to have to add another tool for that. I don't think it'll make it all the way through. So those kind of things we'll get into later when we actually know in more detail what's happening. So if you haven't seen the first video, it probably would have been a good to watch it first rather than this one first if, if that's the way you're seeing them because I described in more detail what we're going to do and I didn't go into that detail on this video. I just wanted to show the simulation of the, of the tools and what we're going to do. And if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. It, it helps me out, you know, to have more subscriptions, to get more, um, you know, YouTube views and everything. And it's not really that I care so much about that, but, but in order to be able to show more people, you have to grow this channel and it helps to subscribe and give likes to it, the videos and, and things like that. So please, you know, like the video and subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next video for the next setup.